All right. So how is everyone? Everyone okay so far? Now we are already coming to the last chapter in uh, for statistics. So how is everyone? How are you? Uh, apa? Macam mana um, statistics part as for now? You guys okay with statistics? Uh, as for now, it's uh, like recalling what we still learn, what we learned in form six for some of us. Oh, almost similar, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is uh, chapter eleven is our last chapter. So previously in chapter nine, chapter ten, uh, in chapter nine uh, last week, where you have to uh, do self learning uh, through recorded video, uh, it is about estimations, right? So I, I suppose post uh, by this week already you have already discussed all tutorial 9 so you should know already it's uh, chapter 9 is about estimation so in estimations we have estimation for population proportions we have three types of est estimations that we learn we, uh, estimations are population proportions that's one and another uh, and the second one will be uh, estimation for population mean when sigma is known Okay, population mean when sigma is known. Sigma here is uh, standard deviation for populations. Lah. All right. And the third one is we learn how to uh, calculate uh, the estimations of population mean when sigma is unknown. If you notice, it is actually similar in chapter 10. Chapter 10 pun now what belajar? These three things, right? You learn how to do hypothesis testing. Also for proportions, satu. The second one is you learn uh, how to do hypothesis testing uh, within mean when sigma is known. Sama tadi, macam the second one in uh, chapter 9. And the last uh, is uh, how to do hypothesis testing for population mean when sigma is unknown. Right? Is to remember chapter 9 and chapter 10. Uh, chapter 9 is all about confidence interval, how to calculate the confidence interval, okay? Chapter 10 is all about hypothesis testing. Now, for chapter 11, okay, this is where you learn how to do inferences from two samples. So, previously, you buat hypothesis testing for one sample only, right? Ada satu samples je, so you only have one type of data. So, that is for hypothesis testing in chapter 10. So, in chapter 11, you, you will learn how to do hypothesis testing where you have two samples, okay? You are the dual samples. But uh, in chapter 11, we do not learn how to do statistic. Kita tak belajar statistic for two proportion. Yang ini tak ada, okay? Ini tak ada. Uh, but we will learn how to do uh, hypothesis testing for two samples, two means, where stigma unknown and not assume equal. So this is, kita ada belajar ni, satu. And we're going to learn also uh, two means independent. Uh, sigma is also unknown, but we assume it as equal. Any, we will go through after this. And lastly, is we're going to look into the match pairs. The match pairs, the dependent sample. So we're going to look into uh, we're going to see the difference between independent two samples, independent two samples, uh, and then we're going to look into the dependent part, okay? So uh, these are the things uh, that we're going to go through today. So differences, two means independent sample. Kita kena focus dengan independent. Oh, sorry, sekejap eh. So we will focus on independent and dependent samples. So independent, kita ada dua. We have two independents where both are sigma unknown, but satu where the sigma is assumed not equal, and the second one is where sigma is assumed equal. Ah, inilah sigma assume equal and uh, eh, no, assume not equal and assume equal. There's two lah for independent sample. Okay. For dependent sample, you only have one lah, okay? So after this, you're going to look into what is uh, independent and dependent lah, right? Okay, uh, like I said, so the objective of this chapter is actually actually an extension uh, from previous 
uh, chapter, which is chapter 9 and chapter 10. So estimating values of population, this will be a chapter 9, right? Estimations. And this will be chapter, uh, chapter 10, testing hypothesis. Yeah, I'm sure, I hope by now you already know how to do hypothesis testing, the steps and everything. If you already know how to do hypothesis testing from previous chapter, so I rasa for this chapter, it will be much easier for you to cope lah. So, but the only difference is the, uh, the, the, the formula actually. So, tu je, okay. Okay, uh, this is the example that uh, where we need to do apa, inferences for two populations. So, for example, yang satu ni, test the claim that when college students are weighed at the beginning and end of their freshman year the difference shows a mean weight gain of 15 pounds so this is um the test that we're going to do kita nak macam contoh dua uh, two samples right like for this one it's like you know uh saya ambil berat from the beginning of the semester your your weight from the beginning of the semester and i want to compare your weight at the end of the semester for example uh kita nak tengok the the, the apa the difference, yeah? the difference between your weight from the beginning and the uh, end of the semester. So from here, when you look at the first uh, example here, actually you, kalau saya tanya, is this independent samples, independence two samples or dependent samples? Is this independent or dependent? What do you think? What do you think? Do you think the data that I take from the beginning and at the end of the semester, does it depend on, is it the dependent samples? Uh, dependent? Yes, this is the dependent samples. Because why? Because, macam contoh, Rebecca, I take your weight uh, at the beginning and I take your weight at, at the upper end of the semester. Of course, the two, two samples, two data is dependent, right? Because it came from the same person. We want to see the different, upper, the different of the weight uh, for the same person. Uh, so this is actually a dependent uh, data. Okay, the second one is the claim that the proportion, uh, ini kita tak, eh? we did not cover for the two inferences. Kita tak cover. Proportion. We only cover means. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> this is a, a definition of independent and dependent. Lah. All right. So two samples are independent if the sample value selected from one population are not related or somehow paired or match with the sample values from the other populations. So here we have two samples, but both samples are not correlated with each other. For example, Chonto, I want to take a cholesterol. Uh, I have two groups of uh, people. I want to take uh, the cholesterol level for this, the first group and the second group. And I want to compare. So, of course, these two samples, it does not depend on each other, right? Because it comes from different group of people. Uh, so, dear, kalau Rebecca group one, uh, apa? Uh, Jesseline group 2. Uh, so, both Rebecca and Jesseline punya cholesterol level does not depend with each other, to each other, correct? So, group 1 and group 2 is independent. That's, that is independent. But for two samples that are independent, and independent, but the dependent, also known as match, sometimes, sometimes in a question they use match. Match ataupun paired. Uh, Kalau you jumpa words like match or pair, uh, usually that is dependent lah. Okay, you know already the, the data is dependent. Okay, so you treat it as dependent. So you need to use the formula for <coughs> dependent. So two samples are dependent if sample values are paired. That is, each pair of sample values consists of two measurements from the same subject. Macam tadi, summer student, but I took two reading from the beginning and the end of the semester. Okay, so before and after data. So each pair of sample con consists of match pairs, such as husband and wife data. Maybe kita nak tengok the, the correlation of husband and wife, something like that. 
So some kalau so I'll just if the questions clearly mention that the data is match match paired, so you treat it as dependent. You tak perlu fikir fikir dah, whether it's dependent or independent. As long as you see something that mentioned in the questions that is match paired then you treat it as dependent data. So you use, uh, apa? oh my God, I forgot to record. Okay, kejap eh. I tekan record. All right. Okay, see you back, All right, so that dependent, as long as you see words like match pair, then you treat it as dependent samples, lah, okay? So the most important thing is when you have a question or case study, you have to determine first whether it's independent or dependent. Then you need to narrow down to which formula you need to use. Huh? That's the most important, the important thing. Because sometimes students, they tend to use this salah, salah, salah formula, uh, salah buat pilihan, then the whole calculations is wrong already. Lah. All right, so this is the samples of uh, independence or dependent, or you want to determine these samples or independent or independent. Okay, let's see number one. Given a data set that includes systol systolic blood measurements from each of 40 randomly selected men and 40 randomly selected women, dependent or the independent? Anyone? Independent or dependent? When you read these samples, is this dependent or independent? Independent. Independent. Yes, independent. Because why? We get the data from 40 men and 40 women, which is not correlated, which is not dependent on each other, right? Women lain, men lain. So it's independent. How about the second one? A survey data on home sold in New York, which contain list price and selling price of each 40 randomly selected homes. Independent or dependent? It's dependent. Yes, it's dependent. Because why? Because this is list of price kita beli dengan kita jual for 40 randomly selected homes. So of course, it will be dependent on each other, kan? Okay, number three, to test the effective, effectiveness of Lipitor, cholesterol level measured in 250 subjects before and after Lipitor treatment. Very it's dependent. dependent. Yes, what? Dependent. Right? Yes, dependent, correct. Because you take the, the, the levels from before and after. So it's dependent lah. Kita nak tengok, this is actually, we want to check the effectiveness of the uh, medicines, right? And whether dia boleh turunkan your cholesterol levels before and after. Yeah? So this is dependent. So make sure you know how to uh, differentiate uh, independent and dependent. Okay, now, the testing procedure is similar with the one in chapter 10. If you still remember, of course, we need to start with the hypothesis first. Again, in chapter 10, first thing you need to look in the question is what is the hypothesis? What is the claim that we want to test? Uh, so we need to test the hypothesis. That's the first one. Second one, is we need to calculate the test statistics values, right? For for proportion, population mean, uh, sigma known, and population mean and sigma unknown, all have different test statistics values, correct? Uh, no, not value, a uh, formula, correct? So kalau kita tengok, this is the one that I give in the telegram, yeah? If you look at this, see? Uh, any test statistics punya uh, apa, formula, right? Uh, you don't follow this chapter, uh, it's different. This one is from reference book. Okay. Uh, so you look at this, all of the test statistics formula is different. That's why it is important for you to differentiate, know to differentiate the case study or the questions in order for you to choose the uh, formula. Okay. So more test statistics uh, well, uh, formula is different. Okay, so the second one is you compute the test statistic values. And of course, the third one, you need to find the critical values from the table. 
yeah, from the table. So you need to find the critical values. How do you get the critical values? Of course, you need to know the alpha, again. How many confidence intervals? Of course, you need to know the alpha. And the critical values is where you get the values from the Z table or T table. Okay, ingat, for proportion and mean when sigma known, we use Z. For mean, sigma unknown, we use T. Yang ini kita tak belajar. Ni T, ni kita tak belajar. Eh? This is the standard deviation and variance. We only study these three. Okay. Remember, proportion and uh, sigma known, we use Z. And for for upper sigma unknown, we use T. Okay, right. And then after we find the critical values, we make the decision. How do we make the decision? Of course, I always uh, advise you to draw the graph. Okay, you make sure you know where is your uh, upper critical uh, critical values. Okay, contoh ini total kan. Make sure you know what is your critical values. Contoh ini for one point two one and negative one point two one. Always better it's better for you to draw to draw a graph like this, a graph like this, and draw the test statistics on in this graph. So let's say your test statistics uh, value that you calculated is three point one, for example. So you know it falls under here. So this is three point one. So clearly it falls within the critical regions. So anything falls within the critical region, you reject the null hypothesis. Yeah, you reject the null hypothesis. So and then you make decision whether you want to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then lastly is you draw a conclusion from the results. Lah. Okay, remember this is the testing claim steps for testing claim using traditional methods yeah any i hope all of you know this already yeah we're gonna use uh, the same uh upper, the same uh, methods yeah the same steps uh this is using p-value methods this one also i hope you guys know already so when p-value any lah, we have to start statistics, compute the test statistics values using the formula, and then you need to find the p-value uh, based on the test statistics from the table, okay, from the table, and then make decision and draw a conclusion. Okay, as for p-value, if it's less than alpha, you reject null hypothesis. When it's more than alpha, you fail to reject, uh, do not reject null hypothesis lah, all right? This is for p-value methods. Okay, for the confidence interval method, uh, confidence interval method is, of course, you need to apply uh, what you have learned in chapter 9. All the formulas for confidence interval. Mm, it's here also. See, these are the formula. Uh, this, these are the things that you learn when sigma is unknown and when sigma is known. These are the things that you learn uh, in chapter 9, eh? the formula that you learn in chapter 9. Okay, so for confidence interval, okay, step hypothesis is a must. Of course, you need to step the hypothesis first. And then you need to calculate the confidence interval. Okay, calculate the confidence interval. And the third one is reject null hypothesis. If the confidence interval does not contain the value of mean or proportion in the claim, if uh, the value is outside the the, crit, apa, the critical region, pula, is outside the confidence interval, kita ada interval kan? When we calculate confidence interval, we're gonna have interval from this number to this number. If the value is outside the critical, uh, yeah, the critical, uh, critical pula, confidence interval then we reject the null hypothesis okay that's how you uh, do a testing using confidence method so make a decision whether you fail or you 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 reject or you do not reject the null hypothesis and lastly you draw a conclusion sama lah macam tadi so you have three methods yeah you have three methods where the first one is traditional methods second one is the p-value methods and the last one is confidence interval method Okay, now, now we go into uh, the, the hypothesis testing, the inferences for two means, where we go into independent first. Okay, kita tengok independent first. In independent, 
you learn two things. Yeah, you learn two things where the populations, the standard deviations is unknown. Dua dua unknown. Standard deviations unknown. But the first one is not assumed to be equal, which is this one. So not assumed to be this equal. Okay. So you're gonna use this formula here. Okay, that is the first one. The second one is the standard deviation for population is also unknown, but dalam soalan or within the case study, it is mentioned that the population of standard deviation are assumed equal. So you have to read carefully lah, are assumed to be equal. Then you need to use a different, uh, a different formula pula. This one is number one, this one is number two, okay? So if it's assumed, not assumed to be equal, you use number one. If it's assumed to be equal, you use number two in your formula, right? So we look at the first one where we do not assume the sigma is equal, okay? So these are all the notations. Because we, we have, now we have two samples, so everything is ada dua lah, kan? So population mean, we have one and two. A sigma also, we have one and two. Sample size of, of so also we have one and two because sometimes uh apa dua sample tu tak sama different size so uh, we have one and two the mean also and also the sample uh, standard deviations yeah all right uh so the requirement to use this formula is of course uh there's no assumption no assumption on the equality so it means that kita tak tahu that tak mention that the sigma is equal. Okay, two samples are independent. Ah, ini penting. Two samples are independent. If you treat the dependent sample as independent, ah, every, maksudnya, every calculation already salah. Okay. So both samples are simple random sample. Okay, and either and both of these conditions are satisfied or the sample size are both large where n is more than 30 and 2 is more than 30 or both sample come from population having normal distribution. So if the questions are mentioned uh, normally have distribution or, or both of the sample is more than 30, then you can use this formula, okay? Provided that sigma is not equal, the samples are independent, okay? Then you can use this, okay? We look at the formula, you can see the number one here from the formula side is similar with this, yeah? We use T distribution, for this, for sigma unknown, we use T distributions, yeah. So, just guna je formula ni. This is how to calculate formula to calculate the statistics. And as for the degree of freedom, you take the minimum, mana-mana minimum antara N1 minus the first sample or the second sample. So, which one is the minimum, you take it as your degree of freedom. Because you have two samples, so mana-mana minimum. After you minus by one, you take that as your degree of freedom. Yeah. Okay, this is the formula for uh, confidence interval. Pula. So the margin of error, so you use this formula. Yeah. As for interval, uh, they're similar like chapter nine. It's just that this is two samples. So it's actually plus minus margin of error, right? The population mean for two samples is plus minus uh, margin of error. So you have the upper confidence is that interval that looks like this. Lah. And that because we use T distribution as well, so you need degree of freedom. Sama juga, the degree of freedom, you take the minimum, okay? The minimum of the samples, of the two samples. Which one is minimum? You take it as degree of freedom. Okay, you look at the example, first example. A sample of 14 cans of brand uh, one diet soda gave the mean number. So you have the first sample, you have 14. Eh? You have 14. Gave the mean number calories. So N1 is 14. Yeah. And the mean number per can uh, of 23. Okay. So your mean number is 23. Standard deviations is as one because this is not population they don't standard deviation for the 14 cans so that is not population that is sample so it is three this is uh, the first uh sample the second sample we have 16 can so n2 is 16 
Okay, and the mean number of calories, so mean, I always, you bulat-bulat kan lah the, the data, the information, yeah. So, mean is 25, mean 2 eh, jangan lupa pula tulis. And the standard deviations, the second standard deviation is 4. This one eh, standard deviation is 4. Okay, test at 0 0.001 significance level, uh, whether the mean number of calories per can, so this is what we need to test, whether the mean number of calories per can are different for these two brands. Kita nak tengok whether these two brands have any difference. Difference. That is our claim. Our claim is the two brands are different. Yeah? The mean number of the two brands are different. So assume that the calories per can of diet soda is normally distributed. Okay. The requirement normally distributed for each of these two brands and that the standard deviations for these two populations are not equal. So, kalau dia dah mention clearly here, it's not equal. So, you use the number one lah. So, you use number one lah. Formula for number one. <clears throat> That's why during exam or during you do when you do your exercise, always have this formula sheet next to you. So, that you can easily refer. You tak perlu buka lecture notes panjang lagi kan. So, you just have the formula sheet with you. Okay. So, this is all the data that we have from the uh, questions just now. And also the requirements are all satisfied, can kita dah study 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 is all satisfied. So we can use this formula. We can use the formula when sigma is unknown and not assume equal. Okay. So now the hypothesis, the claim, the claim is that the claim is that the number of calories per can are different, are different. So means that the mean for the first sample is not equal to the mean of the second sample. Okay. So, whenever you see not equal, you cannot put it in null hypothesis, right? Remember that null hypothesis only consists of equal sign. Anything with equal sign, you put it in null hypothesis. So, kalau you tengok not equal, automatically letak dekat alternative hypothesis and make sure you write dekat hujung dia, this is your claim. So, that later on when you do, a, uh, when you want to make a conclusion, you can make a conclusion lah which one is your claim you reject or not ada apa enough evidence to support or not macam tu lah so because it's opposite kan kita kena opposite kan so our null hypothesis is uh, mean for sample one is equal to mean for sample two okay and from here we know that you, uh, apa mu one uh, mean one uh, the minus uh, mu two is equal to zero kan okay now this is the first step the first step, you write the hypothesis. The second one is you calculate the test statistics. So first, since you know which formula to use already, you just ambil aja, ambil aja formula ni. Just put it here and substitute all the values that you get from the question. So you just substitute and you calculate. Substitute and calculate. Eh, jangan kira salah, eh. sayang if you make a mistake here because it's just a calculation mistake is very, very sayang. So make sure you know how to use your calculator well, the can can add a bracket and everything. Then you calculate and you get your test statistics equal to negative 1.56. Okay. So you move to the second edited edited step is you find the critical values. Remember, uh, as for this, because when you look into this, when you look into uh, the hypothesis, automatically you know this is two tail again because of equal and not equal equal and not equal it will give you two tail so you need to draw the graph macam ni lah two tail eh? two tail and of course if it's two tail then the degree of uh, not the degree of freedom uh the alpha have to be divided by two kan but this one is t table t distribution in t distribution table you have already uh whether it's one tail or two tail so you just follow that and for the degree of freedom you take the minimum values in this case, 14 minus 1 is the minimum, so you get 13. So you refer to the degree of freedom equal to 13. And you refer to the table and you will get the value for T is uh, 3.012. And because it is two, apa, two tail, so you have negative uh, values as well, which is negative 3.012. So you buat dekat sini siap-siap on the graph, where is your critical values? Now, once you have the critical values, what we do is you take the test statistic, 
you draw it in the same graph because you want to see clearly whether the test value falls within the critical region or not. So in this case, the test statistics is negative 1.56. It is actually here, right? So it does not fall within the critical value. So kalau tak fall within the critical values means that we do not reject null hypothesis. Okay, so we do not reject null hypothesis. So means that if we do not reject null hypothesis, kita tak boleh reject null hypothesis and our claim is in the alternative hypothesis means that we don't have enough evidence we don't have enough evidence to support the claim. So, Bob, we do not reject the null hypothesis just now. So, it's, it is indecisive for us to say, uh, tak boleh kita cakap, the null hypothesis, we accept the claim in the alternative hypothesis. Because the null hypothesis, we do not reject. So, if we reject, then it's confirmed that, that we, re we accept the claim, right? But since we do not reject for this case, so we don't have enough evidence to support the claim that the mean number of calories per can of diet soda are different for these two brands. Okay? Okay, so far, it's a traditional method. You guys okay? Any questions? Okay, ke? Faham ke? Uh... Doctor, I have a question. This is uh, not regarding the question, but uh, on emphasis of a question asked in the chat. Uh, someone asked if we will huh? be given yes. a formula sheet during the exam. Uh, no, I already gave you in Telegram, right? Because yeah, this, uh, yeah. So you don't have you 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 should have it at home, lah. Because uh, can kita buat online asynchronous. So the formula sheet you should have it. I already give you in Telegram. Uh, but I will put it as well in the main page later on. So you just print it out and put it next to you during your exam nanti. Uh, macam tu. I don't have to give lah. Kalau if we do face to face, to face memang we, we give the formula sheet lah. But now since you're online, so you have to prepare on your own lah. All right. Thank you, madam. All right. Okay. So far okay. Huh? So we proceed. Okay. We proceed with the confidence interval. Okay. Construct a 99% confidence interval to estimate the difference between the mean amount of calories per can or diet soda on the tube when using the sample data given in previous example. So we still use the same example, uh, but now we want to construct a confidence interval. So 99% confidence interval. So 99, sama lah, alpha is 0 0.01 tadi. It's the same thing. So our, apa, our test... Uh, our critical value is of course the same lah. It's 3.012 when you refer to the T distribution. So alpha is 0 0.01. So now you need to calculate the margin of error. So for the margin of error, uh, you need to, uh, this is the formula for margin of error for two samples uh, where sigma is not assumed equal. So you just use this formula and you substitute all the values inside and you calculate. So you have your margin of error. So once you have your margin of error, once you have your margin of error, then you can make a decision. So the confidence interval limits do contain the, uh, the one in the null hypothesis. Remember, null hypothesis just now consists of uh, mean one is equal to mean two. So mean one minus mean two is equal to zero. So it means that when you calculate the confidence interval, zero falls within the uh, zero falls within zero falls outside the critical uh, the, the interval limits so we did not so it is not supporting the original claim so we fail to reject the null hypothesis so in this case our decision is the same lah. This, uh, the conclusion is the same like the previous one okay so this is how you use confidence interval first of course you need to calculate the margin of error and uh, you need to calculate the interval itself lah, plus minus lah, okay? Okay, now the second example. In randomized control trial conducted with children suffering from viral croup, 46 children were treated with low humidity 
while 46 children were treated with high humidity. So, 46, this is sample number one. Another 46 is sample number two. Okay. Researchers use a group, a group score to assess the result after one hour. The low humidity group had a mean score. So, this is uh, the first one, mean X1. And the standard deviation is so 1.22. So, this is S1. While the high humidity, uh, high humidity have a group mean, so this is X2. So the second mean, and this is S2. The second, uh, no, 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 this is the S2. This is S2. Okay, so our N1 is 46, N2 is 46. Our mean 1 is uh, 0 0.98. Our mean 2 is um, 1.09. Our standard deviations one is 1.22, and our standard deviation two is 1.09. This is sample standard deviation here. Okay, 1.11. Okay. Right, uh, so use a 0 0.05 significance level. So we know that our alpha is 0 0.05. So take out all the information from the from the questions before you start doing the testing. Okay, test the claim that the two groups are from population with the same mean. So maksud dia claim dia mean dia sama. From X1 and uh, no, a mu1 and mu2 is the same. That is our claim, yeah. So we want to test that claim. What does the result suggest about the common treatment of humidity? Assume that okay, this one is important. This sentence here, assume that sigma 1 and sigma 2 are unknown and not assume equal. So looking at this, or oh, you know which formula to use already. Oh, I use this one, the number one. We use this because sigma is unknown and not assume equal. So we use that. So once you know which formula to use and once you have all the data, it's just a simple calculation after that. So this is all the data that we have. Okay. So our claim just now is mu 1 is equal to mu 2. This is our claim. Mu1 is equal to mu2. So, means that our claim, we put it in null hypothesis. So, but because of the equal signs, right? We put it in null hypothesis. So, jangan lupa tulis dekat hujung. This is our claim. Okay? Our claim is in the null hypothesis. Tulis. And also, uh, because of equal, so the opposite of it, we put it in alternative hypothesis, lah, which is not equal. Alright? So, we have your hypothesis. So, now we compute the test statistics value. The statistics, you know what which formula to use already from the beginning. So you just do a simple calculation. You substitute, you substitute and you calculate and you get negative 0 0.452. Okay. And then you need to find a critical value. Sama macam tadi, the first example, you take the minimum uh the apa, the minimum values for degree of freedom. Since the number of samples is the same for both sides, so you just take 45 lah. Okay, and you refer to the table. And since this is, of course, equal and not equal, this is two tail, you are the negative and net positive values for the T. So that is your critical values. And then after that, grow a graph. Lah. Grow a graph. Grow where is your uh, negative 2.014 and 2.014. And what is your value just now? Negative 0 0.452, right? Okay, negative 0, 4.2 is somewhere, eh, sorry, is somewhere here, which is outside the critical values. Dia tak jatuh dalam the, apa, the shaded area, right? It falls outside the critical values. So, we do not reject null hypothesis. That is number four. And number three, you just draw a conclusion, write a sentence where we do not reject null hypothesis. So, uh, we conclude that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the two groups are from the population with the same mean. So we do not enough we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, we do not reject the null hypothesis just now, can? And the claim is within the null hypothesis. So we say that that's how we write the conclusion. Lah. We say that we do not have enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, because we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? So we not enough evidence to reject 
uh, the claim that the two groups are from population with the same mean. So this suggests that the increased humidity does not help in the treatment of croup. Okay. Okay. Now done with the uh, sigma unknown and not assume equal. So we go to the next part where sigma is unknown but are assume equal. Okay. So the first requirement is the two population standard vision are not known. Okay, they tak bagi sigma, they are not known, but it is mentioned in the case study or in the questions that the sigma are assumed to be equal. Dia memang akan cakap lah, the sigma are assumed to be equal. So you use the second formula here, the second one. I have one and two here, right, on your left side. So use the second one. Okay, two samples are independent. Nah, ini penting, dia mesti independent. Ah. Kalau tak, you kena guna dependent. And both samples are in the, uh, simple random samples. And number four, of course, uh, it is mentioned that it's having normal distribution or your color data mention for normal distribution, the n have to be more than 30 in order for you to use the formula. Okay. As, there's, as for the uh, formula, okay, this is the formula. This formula for test statistics. Uh, this is for the formula for inilah, uh, the one that you need to substitute into the uh, test statistics. Uh, ini dia ada banyak sikit calculations lah because you need to calculate the pool estimates kan. You have to calculate the SP square here. Uh, pool estimates of the, uh, standard deviations. So you have to calculate this and then baru you substitute inside here. Okay. And the degree of freedom is different from the previous one. The degree of freedom here is N1 plus N2 minus 2. Okay. So once you determine which formula to use, to do that. Siapa punya mic tu buka? Rachel, Rachel Marvin, your mic is on. Rachel. Can someone uh, call her or message her to turn off the mic? Eh, sekejap, saya boleh offkan kan? Sekejap, saya boleh offkan kan? Ah, sorry. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Apa pula saya boleh? Uh, tu. Alright, uh, where are we just now? Okay, we proceed to the next uh, page. Okay, now, uh, this is the formula for the confidence interval. Yeah, this is the formula for the confidence interval for uh, when we assume uh, the and the sigma is uh, equal. Uh, this is the margin of error. This is margin of error. The degree of freedom is similar. And once you calculate the margin of error, you just plus minus with the mean. Kita tengok lah mean, mean dia tu is within, uh, we need to plus minus lah and see whether, you know, when we want to make a conclusion, we want we need to see whether whether zero is within or outside the uh, intervals. Yeah? Okay, now let's use the similar example. Macam yang tadi, we use the similar example. It's just that as for this, we assume that the sigma is equal. So kita assume sigma is equal. So it means that we need to use the formula 2 here. So we need to use. So first, of course, macam saya cakap tadi, we have extra calculations because for this one, we need to calculate the estimated pool sigma uh, standard deviation, which is SP square. So we need to calculate this. So you just substitute, substitute some more value. This is from the previous, the value here is from the previous example, yeah, the 46 one, yes now. Okay. So you calculate, so you get 1.3603 lah. Okay, once you have that, you substitute pula dalam test statistics because it's here kan. Uh, so you substitute it here and you calculate as well, simple calculations and you get test statistics equal to negative 0 0.452. Okay, once you calculate test statistics, you need to find the critical values. For the degree of freedom, you have this formula here, N1 plus N2 minus 2 and you will get degree of freedom is 90. So therefore, the critical values from the t-table, you get since this is two tail, yeah, two tail, and uh, so we have negative one point nine eight four and one point nine eight four. Okay, 
sama juga then we check the uh, test statistics okay the test statistics that we calculate we take this test statistics draw it in the same graph with the critical values eh? and see whether it falls within or outside the critical region kalau tengok ini it fail uh, it falls outside the critical region so we do not reject the null hypothesis sama lah macam tadi kan but just that tadi we treat it as uh, apa uh, the sigma is not assumed to be equal and now we treat it as sigma assumed to be equal we use a different formula and since we do not reject the null hypothesis so the, the conclusion is the same like previous one lah so you just refer to the previous example uh, the, the conclusion is the same okay okay now we go into the last part which is this one the third one where it is about dependent samples okay with dependent samples study is independent okay kalau samples there to the two samples are independent we use that one and then we determine whether we want to use the first formula or the second formula first formula or second formula ni yang inilah whether we assume equal or we assume not equal as for dependent sample you only have one formula we only have one formula once we determine it is dependent then we know already which one to use lah okay so this is the notations that are gonna have uh you will find you found in the uh, formula later on so d d is the indi individual between uh individual difference uh, d ni difference lah between the two values of single match pairs before and after value uh, difference between two, you can tolak, you can you have to minus the difference of before and after, and that is will be that will be your d lah. Okay, u d um, u pula. mu d is the mean value of difference of d for the population of paid data. Okay, uh, d bar is the mean value for difference. Okay, and s d is the standard deviations for sample lah for the two for d for difference, and n is the number of pairs of data pairs of data. So before or after, kalau ada 10 sample, uh, means that you have 10, n equals to 10. Yeah, macam tu. Okay, the requirement, of course, it have to be dependent. Of course, you need to read the questions, read the case study carefully, and baca betul-betul lah, uh, and decide whether it's dependent or independent. If it's dependent, then it's one of the requirement. And the samples are simple random samples. And of course, it is mentioned, it is normally distributed, or the data is large where n is more than 30, and we can treat it using uh, this formula lah, all right? So like I said, the, the, the formula is, on, you have only one formula for match pairs for dependent sample. We have, this is for test statistics, okay? Test statistic formula and your degree of freedom is n minus 1. Okay, n minus 1. Why you have only n? Like I said, because this is match pairs, you do you, you do not treat it as two uh, data. You do not treat it as two samples. So, maksud dia, if 10, 10 people, uh, 20 samples uh, before and after result, uh, then the n is equal to 20 lah. Okay, macam tu. And this is the formula for the confidence interval for match pairs. Kalau dekat sini kan, there's test statistics. We don't have any confidence interval here. You can find it. So you have to be uh, really apa, uh, familiar with uh, the formula sheet lah. Then you know where to find lah. Uh, macam ni. Uh, this will be the, in this formula sheet, they combine it not using our, uh, the chapter in our lecture. It's just that they, they combine it using confidence interval. Dia letak satu tempat. Test testing, that's the same part. Okay, this is for one population. This is one population, two populations. Okay, this is for chapter 10. This is for chapter 9. Eh, chapter 9, chapter 11. Macam tu. So later on, you look carefully to the formula sheet lah. Make yourself familiarized with uh, the formula sheet. Okay, so the confidence level for match pair is like this. Okay, and this is your margin of error. So you calculate margin of error first and then you plus minus with the difference. Okay. Okay, look at the example here. A survey has been done to measure weight of college students from Unimas in September and April of the freshman year. Table below lists a small portion of these sample values. Use the sample data with 0 0.05 significance level. Alpha is 0 
to test the claim to test the claim that the population of students the mean change weight from september to april is equal to zero means that the difference is equal to zero for the mean yeah that is our claim we want to test the claim that berat september dengan april tak ada beza and that's the claim so we have given this we are given this data now oh, ini april this is september weight yeah april and september so you will only be given this data actually you know you will only be given this data okay as for the difference you need to calculate it on your own usually in case study you only you will be only given a data you the difference you tak ada you have to calculate it on your own and since since you can see uh where is it oh. Let me see. Okay. Since you can see here, we need D square. Kalau you tengok the formula here, we need D square. So means that it's better for you to have another row that consists of D square. So after you calculate D, dekat bawah, you put another row that you, you calculate D square siap-siap. So you calculate d square for every data okay, because later on let's now you just substitute inside yeah so if you can see the other summation of you have you, you will need the data for summation of d square then you do it siap siap dekat table this is the summation of d square this summation for d so later on you just need to substitute okay so now of course first step is state the hypothesis so hypothesis dia tadi, dia cakap the mean change in weight from September to April is equal to zero. So the mean change is equal to zero. Ni maksudnya mean change lah, the difference lah, the mean of the difference is equal to zero. So you put it, because of equal sign, you put it in null hypothesis. And don't forget to write the claim. This is your claim, supaya you tak lupa. And the alternative hypothesis is of course the opposite of the null hypothesis. It will be not equal okay since equal and not equal we're gonna have two tail lah. so for two sample always gonna have two tail so now you need to calculate the test statistics uh, test statistic the formula is of course you need to have uh ni kan sd uh, dekat sini dia tak letak pula the formula for sd so later on maybe you can tulis dekat tepi ni lah on your on your formula sheet you just write what is the formula for sd blah blah blah, blah. okay because in this formula sheet they don't have it so the formula of uh standard deviations is now for the difference uh, you calculate it first so since uh in the table just now you expand it so that you have d square so it'd be easier for you to just substitute lah so you just substitute inside what's the value of summation of d square and summation of d and then square uh, you calculate you get sd is equal to 2.4 and now uh you calculate and you have to, and you just substitute into the test statistics formula because it has uh, this uh d ni ah uh, yeah d ni senang je lah you just buat the average yeah how to calculate the mean uh, so you just plus all the summation of d and minus at minus pula divide with the number of samples which is five so equal to 0 0.2 so once you have these two you just substitute inside the test statistics formula you calculate you get the test statistics as 0 0.186 okay okay once you calculate the test statistics so the next step will be the critical values lah and for the, the critical values since now we this one we know we're going to use t uh distribution okay so the degree of freedom uh, for this match pairs for dependent is n minus one so we have five samples is now right so five minus one equal to four and then you refer to the table and you have uh, the critical values is plus minus 2.776 so you draw it in a graph like this and then you take uh, the value for the t statistics which is this one 0 0.186 so you draw it in the same graph and see whether uh falls within the critical region or not so in this case falls outside the critical region can so falls outside the critical region so we do not 
we do not reject null hypothesis. So since we do not reject null hypothesis, we conclude that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the populations uh, of students, uh, the mean change in weight from September to April is equal to zero because we do not reject the claim just now. So we do not have, so the way you write the conclusion is, I think how to write the conclusion is in chapter, chapter eight, right? I think it's in chapter eight. So you, if, if you are still confused how to write the conclusion, you refer to chapter eight on the basic of hypothesis testing. Then, then di dekat situ, dia ada tulis how to write the conclusions. Yeah, so since our claim is in the null hypothesis and we do not reject the null hypothesis, so we can say that we conclude there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. Kita tak ada, we do not reject the null hypothesis just now, right? So there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that the population of students, the mean change in weight from September to April is equal to zero. And that's how you write the conclusions lah. Okay. Now as for p-value pula, if we want to use p-value, okay, find p-value based on the test statistics. Test statistics that we calculate, of, of course for p-value, we have to calculate the test statistics you got using the same formula. So test statistics that we calculate just now is 0 0.186, right? And the degree of freedom is 4. So using the t-table, you need to find the p-value. So you need to find the t-value. So using, uh, in this case, I think in this case, uh, when you try to find it in t-table, uh, you, you will not be able to find it in the t-table uh, because of uh, the limitation of the t-table. So using some technologies, I think using uh, there's a there's an applications uh, in internet as well for you to calculate the apa, p value. Ah, uh, And you need to compare lah whether it's greater than two or not. And whether it's greater than 0 0.05 or not. So in this case, it is p-value is more than 0 0.2. So the actual value is actually 0 0.8 when you use uh, apps, lah, any, any, any software. And this, the actual 0 is 0 0.8. Therefore, but from the t-table, you, you only can say that it is greater than 0 0.25. Okay. So when you compare it with, with the upper, with the alpha, which is 0 0.05, it is greater than 0 0.05, right? So we do not reject null hypothesis. Since the p-value is greater than our alpha, or then alpha, so alpha here is 0 0.05, and our p-value is more than 0 0.25, so clearly it is more than 0 0.05 lah. So we do not reject null hypothesis. The, same, the, the decision, the conclusion is similar like the previous one lah, sama lah, how you write the conclusion. Uh, sama lah macam ni, this is how you write the conclusion because it came from the same example as now. Okay? So conclusion, you write it as like the previous one. Okay, now for the confidence interval pula, confidence interval for the dependent samples. So still the same example, just that we need to calculate the confidence interval. So 95% confidence interval estimate of uh, mu uh, d, which is uh, the mean change, which is the mean of the April and September weight differences of college students in their freshman year. So this one you already calculate can tadi on from the table and also this one already also already calculate and this one you get it from the table lah. So you just substitute into the margin of error formula. So margin of error for match pairs is kalau dalam dalam okay this will be it lah okay. So the formula for margin um apa confident uh, margin of error is this. So you just substitute all the values and you have margin of error equals to three. So when you calculate uh your confidence interval. So your D is, the difference is 0 0.2. Oh, this is supposed to be 0 0.2. Okay. D, the, the mean is 0 0.2. So plus minus with margin of error lah. So margin of error is 3 just now. So you have an interval within, from negative 2.8 to 3.2. That is our, your, your. So the mean will be negative 0.8. To 3.2, uh, that is our interval from negative 2.8 to 3.2. Okay, 
to 3.2. So means that kita, kita nak tengok the 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 claim is that the mean is equal to zero, right? So zero is false within the interval, kan? Zero false within negative 2.8 and 3.2. So means that it does support the null hypothesis. So means that we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and the conclusion, you write it similar like uh, uh, the previous one lah, okay? The previous yang kita tulis on the first example because this is from this same example. All right, so that's it for chapter 11. Any questions so far? You guys okay or still try to absorb? Okay, eh? uh, Still trying to absorb for me. Okay. <laughs> So you need some time to look at the, I will put the recorded sessions, uh, recorded ni in the ELIP uh, by today or maybe tomorrow. And then you can watch it over and over lah. And then try to do, uh, try to, apa? try to do tutorial 11. And you will discuss tutorial 11 next week, I suppose, with your uh, lecturer, your tutorial lecturer lah. All right, so is there any question? No, huh? All right, so uh, assignment two is already out. So you have two weeks to do assignment two. You have to do it in pair work. Uh, and then, apa lagi? So this will be our last lecture, our last lecture, and this will be our last chapter. So now we complete already all chapter five until chapter 11. So what you need to do is you need to do revision from chapter 5 to chapter 11. So you have two weeks of free time. That lah free sangat because you know end of semester you you have a lot of assignment kan. So use uh, this tadi class on uh, Friday. Uh, use it to make a re uh, do a revision. Your exam is uh, your exam is on Kalau tak ada pertukaran, it's on 8th of July for this, for this course lah, for this TMF1874. 8th of July, I think. And nanti you tengok lagi lah dalam timetable. Yeah, final. So, uh, next week you're still gonna have a tutorial, yeah, by group. Uh, I will see my CS group. Uh, nanti kita jumpa on, on Monday. So, try to do this tutorial 11 before that. Yeah, there's no attendance because oh, sampai sekarang masih problem our QR code. So, it's okay. Alright. So, uh, what chapter that we ask? In chapter, semua chapter. 5 until 11. The format, Miss, uh, Madam? The format is, um, it's 40 questions of multiple choice questions. Macam dulu, macam the midterm test. Kita ada 40 MCQ. And then we have section B, where section B, uh, we have structured question. Similar lah, I think we have four questions in chapter, section B. Uh, we four. have four, uh, four questions in section B. The, 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 met, the format is similar, uh, how many hours is also similar like the midterm. I will, I will put the details later on in our uh, ELIP exam lah. We're going to have it in our ELIP, ELIP exam, bukan dalam main page eh. Final exam is in ELIP, ELIP exam. All right, if nothing else, uh, all the best for your assignment too and all the best for your final. Uh, uh, program CS, kita masih jumpa next week, eh? All right, see you guys. Bye. Thank you, madam. All right. Thank, Thank you, you madam. Bye-bye.